Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Manhattan Project War Machine, but before we begin, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel so that when I have an oops moment, you'll know about it. Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and I'm excited to run through Manhattan Project War Machine. This is a 30 to 60 minute game for one to four players, and I've got this set up for two. Now in this game, players are trying to build up the biggest military power that they can. And as its leader, they have a government contract, which every player is going to receive two and pick one from. They also have a company that essentially is kind of sponsoring them. And that gives them a special opportunity to activate during the retrieve workers action. They also have this wonderful like cargo hold and place to build structures. You've got government buildings, I've got commercial buildings, industrial buildings. This is where I'm gonna keep all my resources. So this is my player area right here. I've got food and steel, obviously necessary to feed your workers and to build all these different structures, money, victory points, and then possibilities to expand uh, my worker force because my workers are these dice. I'm going to be rolling these dice and sending them out to the board out here. This is where the action stations are. I've got a space over here to really work on finance and building up commercial district. Over here is the kind of government science technology space where it's chemistry and ammo and building. And then on this side is like that kind of supply. There's like resources to mine for steel and then to uh, build and hopefully truck all of this stuff. So this is going to be that main player area that keeps track of the rounds. You'll see here for a two player game, we're going to play six rounds. I'm gonna play as the start player, I'm gonna do my turn, and then Lewis is gonna play, and I've got his board over here that's just segmented up. Players are gonna place their boards out like this in front of them, so it's one nice long track. Um, and as you see here, there are possibilities to upgrade. Look at this, I'm gonna expand my uh, possibility to build even more structures in government and so forth. And then these are gonna be my workers. And so I'm just gonna jump into it because my very first thing I do, is says here, A, roll all of your action dice. Let's do it. These are gonna be my workers. I roll my dice and I'm gonna take a look at them. So this is what I got. I got an energy. I got this kind of top hat, which is gonna be my commercial worker, and I got a nuclear symbol. Nuclear symbols are a little bit dangerous because they give you a minus one victory point, but they're a wild worker. So I'm gonna take that wild worker because wild workers are so helpful and so powerful. For one thing, if you wanna activate your company, you're gonna to have to have a wild worker, one of those nuclear symbols. So I'm gonna keep that bad boy, it is. Again, a little dangerous, a little deadly. Uh, let me take that minus one victory point and put it in my player area. Whoops. <laughs> Not the worst though, again. I mean, super, super versatile worker. Now, I can keep more dice if I want, but I can reroll up to two times. Every single time I roll though, I have to keep one die. So I'm gonna look at this and think, do I wanna keep that top hat? And I'll tell you one thing, keeping the top hat gets me cash and it gets me money. And I need money so that I can come over here and I can upgrade my cargo hold and get more workers. So I'm gonna keep the top hat and I'm gonna roll the die and hope I get another worker because the energy is good but it's not as good as a worker because this is segmented into two different sections. And if you get the worker, it benefits other players, which you'll find out here in a minute, but it, it it's not as, it's more powerful. The energy is not as strong. And so it's a weaker action, but it still works. So I'm gonna roll, 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 and hope, hope. What did I get? I got a wrench. <laughs> okay, so I got a wrench. The wrench is gonna help me over the industrial section. I'm gonna keep my dice. I had to, I only had one die and I have to keep one every time I roll, but you only get to re-roll twice. So no matter how many dice or workers you get, that's the, that's the rule. So I'm going to now move on to B. Assign each die and take my worker or energy actions. Now I need to figure out what order to place my dice out in because I need to do some things. I wanna do some upgrades. I wanna do some expansions. I wanna do some generation. I need, I need to think about even getting structures because at the end of each plate time you put out your workers, they come back and they do jobs for you in your structures. But if you don't have any structures, they're not working for you. So I have a lot to do, but I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna play this top hat first. I'm gonna go here 
and you have to play in a worker-led action in that particular quadrant first. You can't place and lead with an energy, which is another reason why getting a worker with one of the symbols is more powerful. So it's more important too. So I put this top hat right there. It can't go in this space and it can't go in that space. This has to go here. So I'm gonna play that down and I'm gonna look in this section here. Do I want finance, get $3? Do I want to expand by paying one of each of these, a food and a steel, to gain one of these upgrades, which gives me expansion, but it also gives me victory points? Do I want to get even more cash? I can do it up to two times. Or do I want to build a building down here, build a structure for cheaper? Or if I want to build one of the other two, it costs me $1 more. And the cost is always here listed on those spaces where you have like this kind of conveyor belt of moving structures that cost, you know, less and less the further they go down the track. I want to get cash. So I want to get cash and three is not enough. I start with $2 as the start player. I start with two bucks, one steal, one food. My opponent starts with $1, one steal, and one food. So I'm looking at this going, I need to get up to $6 now. So I'm going to activate this space, and I think I want to pay a steal. I'm going to pay my steal instead of my food because I'm not going to this space this turn, and this is where steal costs are. And so I'm hedging my bets and thinking I might my food is going to be valuable to me. So I'm going to pay my steal one time and get four dollars now i could pay my food and gain three of those four dollars because i can't go past nine notice this is capped if i want to expand i can expand and now i can get even more resources and i can get more money and more victory points but i'm gonna have to pay for this upgrade i'm gonna have to pay for it by going here now, I don't think I want to do this twice. I think I need to do it just once because my next move is by playing my wrench. Oh, but before so, this is the cool thing about playing a multiplayer game. This is like, again, you're you're not just playing on your, your turn. You're playing on other players' turn in this game. And I love that. So because I led with that top hat, I did my action. I look out at all my opponents and I say, okay, opponents, it's time for you to take an energy action. If you lead with the worker, everybody else at the table gets to do one of these actions and not just the one in the row that I did it in. They don't have to do trade. They can do finance. They can do trade or they can do build. And so Lewis is going to look over here at his board and he's going to say, do I want a free dollar? Sounds pretty good to me. Can't do the expand action. It says it has a big mark through it. Does he want to pay one of those to get two more dollars, which is not as good as mine? Well, it's half as good. It's, it's just not as good. See how this is a weaker side? It gives you similar actions, but not as good. Here, just buy one of those buildings, which he can't afford, um, with no discount. And it's just simply buying the commercial buildings or the structures. So he's going to take probably the one dollar. He's going to take the free dollar, I think, instead of paying a thing to get uh, a food or a steal to get one more dollar. So that's one die. I did the action. All my opponents get to do the uh, energy action. I'm going to take my wrench and I'm going to play in the wrench zone. And I'm going to look over here in that dark zone. I'm going to say, do I want two steel? Do I want to pay one food to get two victory points twice up, up to uh, two times? Do I want to pay $6 to do one of these upgrades? Yes. Or do I want to build a building again? It's always one less for the type that it is, or one more uh, steel in this case for the other two types. Well, I want to pay the $6 because I'm going to go from six all the way down to zero, and I'm going to upgrade my cargo hold, which gives me, here's my backside. I, I do this action there, which is the one I just did, and it's going to give me not just two victory points at the end of the game, it's going to give me an extra die, which is an extra worker. I place that here and I immediately reach into the pool of dice and I will roll this worker and I will now have this worker right now. So I'm gonna roll this worker and I got one of these guys. I got one of the governments. Remember I said I, I didn't think I was gonna be going in that direction? Well, guess what? I'm going over into that direction because this can't go here and it can't go here. It can only go here. My nuclear symbol can go anywhere. So I'm thinking, what do I wanna do next? Because I think I need to get a structure because I wanna activate my structure. 
I'm going to be activating hopefully my uh, company, which only is activated by using a nuclear symbol um, die worker. Let's see here. I can come here and maybe do, nope, I can't afford that upgrade because I was thinking of getting one of these bonuses, but I think I need to invest. How can I get, ah, I can get some more of food and then I can come back here with my nuclear symbol and I can buy one of those buildings. That's not the worst thing. I just don't have any steel. I told you I was going to waste my steel. Hmm. How can I get, how can I get more steel? I can come here with my nuke and I can get two steel and then I can come over here and get the disposal site, which gives me a chance to, ooh, let's do that. Yeah, I think so. Okay, now before I send this worker out, I had a lead worker here with the wrench. Um, I'm simply gonna say to my fellow players, would you like to do something? Do you wanna gain a steal? Do you wanna pay one food to gain a victory point? Do you wanna build a building? I think right now, again, a lot of us are generating resources at this time. I think he's just gonna take a dollar, or sorry, take a dollar, take a steal, um, because paying to get a victory point isn't necessarily going to benefit him right now. Okay. So now I'm looking at mine and I'm thinking, I want to play this guy out to maybe get some steel so that I can get a structure. So I think I need to play this out here and I'm going to activate it as a main worker. It's going to give me two steel and I'm going to look out and say, okay, everybody else, you could do a steel, pay one to get one. And then you could also do this. Lewis is just racking up all of those, uh, you know, secondary actions based on my primary, based on those main workers, but that's okay. It's powerful enough for me that it's okay that they get uh, things, things off of my back. And then lastly, I'm going to play this die out and I get to look out here. Do I want to go and do some chemistry, gaining food, pay steel for victory points, pay cash to turn over my nukes to green energy, or do I want to build a building for one less? And I think I want to do the building uh, a building for one less because I can afford this disposal site for just two steel. It costs one steel less because I'm doing the main action. And the disposal site is going to let me, when I play two workers during the retrieve worker phase, and it's going to allow me to do this action. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in my government space, and it's going to cost me two steel. And now I'm going to, oops, but I'm going to wait for everyone else to respond. And then I'm going to move all the, the cards down. So now Lewis is going to get to do this. Does he want uh, a food? Pay one for one. Nothing. Do a, a house. He doesn't have, oh, he has enough steel. Oh, he has enough steel to buy the headquarters. Oh, that is fascinating. It is a game end card which at this time is not the greatest to blow all of your resources on especially when it's not your turn it's that secondary action it's three steel and two dollars boy I sure wish that maybe this had been there instead oh he has so much he could build he could build but I think what he might want to do is just keep gaining resources he's doing really good when it's not his turn so when it is his turn he gets his dice and he gets all of these resources that he's been building up. So that was my action plus his secondary action. And I am done assigning my dice and taking my uh, worker actions. So I'm going to retrieve everything and I'm going to put my dice out into my space over here. Now, here's one thing that I forwent that I did not do. I have this nighttime construction card and it is a dynamite card. And I miss the opportunity because it only activates with a nuclear symbol. If I have a victory point, I can use it one time, I can spend it, and I can upgrade anything. I can, I can flip one of my tiles over. And this is a special, special thing. Um, and it's this symbol right here. You can see that. And it's going to give me more expansion. My government card piggybacked. I chose these two um, back to back because I got two two cards each and I and I saw these synergized. If I have five of my uh, expansions, those five flipped over, I get five points at the end of the game. So I picked this thinking I could at least do it five out of the six times, if not doing it here on the board, and I can totally get that. 
but I missed the chance here because I had to get a victory point and I spent all my time upgrading dice and getting cool structures. You just can't do everything on your turn, but it just, I wish I could have. So, so I'm going to put my top hat here because that matches. I'm going to put my wrench here because it matches. I'm going to put my um, star here. And here's the thing. I've got to put my nuclear symbol there, which could be any worker. Because to activate my disposal site, I need two dice. If I just have one die, I can't qualify. It needs to be two dice, and this means I can only do it one time. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to activate it by pushing it down because it has two dice to qualify. And I take this and I flip it over to its positive side. So I took that negative one nuclear trash or waste and I turned it into a positive one victory point green energy. So that negative nuke that I took right here doesn't hurt me anymore because now I've got a disposal site. And this can be activated every single time I bring my dice back. So I activated my structures and now I'm gonna clean up and check for game end round. So I push this back up. I take all my dice, which now include four dice, and I am ready to go. It's not the end of the round. I was the first player because I've got the marker. It's going to go to Lewis. He's going to be second player in the round, and we're still up here in that round uh, six. So exciting. That's going to be it for me, and I'm going to push this down, the arrow direction, and I'm going to reveal the new one. There's a mint. It's going to have money and victory points you just get. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. I need that because I need victory points just for free so I can activate this guy if I have my nuclear symbol. Okay, Lewis is going to go. He is going to roll his dice. This is that very first phase. Roll all of your action dice. Let's see what he gets. He got one of each worker, which could be this one. It goes here, here, and here. I wonder if he wants to do that and just activate those three spaces and get the maximum for what it says, I feel like he wants to probably do a similar move to mine. I have to say that getting more dice is more workers is better generally. And you want to really build your engine soon in the game. And he might find that coming down here and getting the money so that he can gain the die which gets him another action, which then allows him to maybe build one of these. Oh boy, if he could build the mints this turn, dynamite turn. Now he didn't get a nuke, but his government contract says, if you have no nuclear waste at the end of the game, you're going to receive three points. So he doesn't want nuclear waste. Now he could turn it green like I did, and that means it doesn't count but he also doesn't really want to generate it. So I'm going to say he's going to keep all three of those dice. Now, there is a way for you to have what's called the energy die. And the energy die is a secondary weaker action that players don't get to follow because you're doing the weaker action already. It just has to be paired with one of your main workers before you can play it. You can't just play an energy out all by itself as a lead die into a space. So let's have him just do it. He's gonna do, uh, he's gonna play out here and he's going to have to pay one of these resources if he wants to get up to the $6 because that's gonna be the $6 cost. So I think he's gonna pay one of those and he, where does he wanna go? Mining zone gives bonuses. State house gives a game end. Over here, I think he might want to, gosh, I think he really wants to keep his steel. I think he wants to keep his steel because he has, oh, but he has to cost, oh, he has to pay money over there. Oh, there's money everywhere. There's so many expenses. Let's have him pay one food and he is going to do this where he gets to gain $4. That's great. Now I am going to go and I'm going to do one of these actions. I can pay my last food to get $2 or I can gain a dollar. Which one do I want to do? Because I am all out of resources. I can't even do this build building down here action. I'm going to gain a dollar. I wish it. I wish I could get more money faster, but do oh boy, it is hard. This is so hard. Okay, that's one. Then he's going to come over here and activate to pay 
his six dollars and he is going to upgrade here to get that extra die again I can't tell you how valuable it is to have an extra worker now there is a way to upgrade your main board that allows you to change one face of your die for free and get two victory points which is dynamite for flexibility and choice but that costs six dollars as well it's pretty pretty pricey so he pays his six he flips it over he's gonna grab this extra die and roll it right away and it's a wrench so he's gonna put that wrench right there it's gonna allow him to activate again in the industrial section but I am gonna get a chance do I want to pay my food to get a victory point? Yes, I do. Because again, I was victory point shy of activating my nighttime construction. So instead of taking a steal, I'm going to pay that food and I'm going to gain that victory point because I need that. I can't afford to buy the building. Okay, now he's got this wrench guy again. It gets him more steel. He needs three steel and three dollars and he needs to come over here and activate this space. Well, dang it, he doesn't have any cash. I really hoped if he'd come here and gotten a top hat or a nuclear symbol, he could have gotten $3 and then he could have bought the mint and that would have been just the best. I mean, it really would have been the best. But he needs to go buy one of those cards and it might just be the headquarters even though it doesn't activate this round. Is there any way that he can do something else? I don't think there's any way. He can come down here. Yep, okay. Nope, he doesn't have the top hat. Oh, gosh darn it. I was gonna come here with the star and get him some food, which would then allow him to buy food. Mm, gosh darn it. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get a structure this turn. Maybe I can get him something else. Maybe there's something else that's just really, really good. He can maybe do an upgrade but he can't do it because he has no top hat and no uh, energy symbol. So he just keeps coming up just a little short. Can he buy one of these for a dollar less? He needs three dollars to do it, but again, he can't have the money. Okay, so let's have him spend. Nope, we're going to have him come here and he is going to activate two food. We're going to have him get two food as the main action here. Can he buy that? Should he buy that steel? Should he buy the headquarters? Gosh darn it, it just seems so early to buy something like that. It does make everything else a little bit cheaper. I think he's just going to get the two food. And then I get to have an action on the uh, energy side, which is one food, pay or pay. Well, I don't have anything, so I'm just taking a food. And then his last action here is the wrench. Has to go in the wrench zone. He gets to have two steel, or he can pay two food and get two victory points. Uh, well, he get, pays one food, gets two, can do it again and get two more, which is so good, but he's saving it to buy those structures. And then he can do this, he can't do that, and he can't do the building. So let's have him go one, two steel. That's gonna be it. So he is essentially done placing all of his dice out. Um, I'm gonna get one of these things and I might just do the get the food for the victory point again. No, nope, I'm going to take the steal. I'm going to take the steal. I think that's actually a really, really solid move for me. Okay, dice back. And he's going to place them out into his zones. His two wrenches have to go here. His top hat has to go here. And his star has to go here. Now, look at that. He's got tons of great activations, which is your activate your structures phase. But he just wasn't able to get that structure. And even if he had gotten headquarters, it's just a game end tile. And so he's not able to activate it. It just simply will activate at the end of the game. Again, not a bad choice, but there's a lot of choices out here. He did not have a nuclear symbol. If he'd had a nuclear symbol, he could have built any structure from the market with a discount of one resource. And he could have easily have done that, but he just could not roll the nuke symbol. Um, but... There are ways to trade out. I think I've mentioned this before. When you're rolling your dice, you can one time make one die, you take it and you set it aside, and then change any other die to any side that you want. And so you are losing a worker to gain the specific action you want unless you upgrade your board in which you don't have to sacrifice a, a die or a worker. 
So that's going to wrap up that. We're going to bring these dice back here. We're going to check for the end of the round. It is. So we're going to move this down to five, and then we are simply going to start with our next round. And I'm more than excited to get started. So let me grab my dice. I'm going to roll all my action dice. I got some pretty cool stuff. Do I want to buy over here? I don't really have that many resources, but I could go and get some food if I like that star symbol. I really like this so I can actually activate my uh, company this turn. So I'm going to keep this, but I have to take one of these guys. I'm just, uh, you know, trashing it up. I've got a lot of nuclear waste, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not the worst. Now, do I want to keep this? I feel like I should. I feel like that's not the worst. It gives me trade out for victory points as well. Um, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to re-roll these. Okay, so I'm going to roll these uh, two energy again. And I got a top hat and an energy. I think I should keep the top hat. I love coming here. It gives me a chance to maybe invest in commercial. Uh, it gives me cash and cash gives me a chance to really expand my cargo hold up here. And do I just keep my energy and then I can use it as a follow-up action to any of these main action locations and then get one of the weaker actions? It's not the worst choice because it allows you to follow up in one of these spaces as well. And then I can guarantee a, a chance for me to go and do disposal. You know what? I'm going to keep it. Because if I do this and this up here and I do this down here, I would be activating my top hat and maybe I can gain one of these this turn so that I can activate all my structures. Because when you roll your dice, you're not just thinking about where to put them out on the board, you're also thinking about what you're activating in your structures area. Okay, this is great. I'm really, really excited. So what can I do? If I come here and I want to do a building, I've got to have food. So let me use my star first. I'm going to come here and I'm going to activate and gain two food so I can actually buy one of these down here. Ooh, I hope. <laughs> I hope. Um, because I don't think I can really afford this government section. It's just so, so expensive. But because I did this, Lewis is going to get a chance. He can trade it out or he can just buy one of these government buildings, but he has no cash still. Oh no, he's so close. Well, he's going to take a food because right now he's not necessarily begging for victory points. I think you generate again, you're building up your engine before you get going. So I think he's doing okay for that. And, and I only have one myself, which I'm spending at the end of this turn. So I went, he took his secondary action and then I'm going to place out next. What do I want to do? Is the top hat the next place I want to go? I think it might be. I come down here to commercial because I want to invest in... Do I want to or do I want... Oh, wait, 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 wait. What if I send my nuclear symbol over here to my wrench? I come here so that I can actually get steel. One, two, steel. So I'm coming down here again. Let's see here. Can he get a steal? Does he pay one for one? Can he pay this? He has no cash. He's maxed out on steel right now. So if he gets a chance to gain more steel, he's not going to be able to get any more, but it's not bad to have so much built up because then he can do a lot of purchasing. So that was going to be this nuke symbol. He got the follow up with the energy action. And now I'm going to come here because I want to pay and get one of the better um, tiles. I didn't want this because I already have a disposal site. I don't need a recycling plant too. I don't think so. It's not as efficient. And I really wanted to skip over here to get to the restaurant. So this is going to give a one food discount. So I only pay two food and then I pay two steel and I'm going to get the restaurant. And the cool thing about the restaurant is I can activate it with one single die, but I can do it twice. They're not together in the same black space. So I don't have to have two to do it once. I need one to do it once and one to do it again. And I can pay a food and gain money. This is massive. I think this is really, really good for me. So that was going to be, I paid it, I add it, top hat. What is he going to do and take as, uh, oh, he's definitely going to pay a steal, one steal to gain $2. That's how you use your steel so that you can actually gain some really good stuff. So that was this action under trade. Really, really good for him as the follow-up action. And now I play my last one. So this energy can go here 
or here, or here, because each of them have a lead die. They have a lead worker. Now, where do I want it to go? I'm gonna be able, to, oh, one more thing. This replaces at the end of that action. And now there's a new bomb shelter. You can get rid of three uh, nukes um, if you have that. And this might actually behoove Lewis if he starts getting those nuclear symbols and he doesn't clean them up the way I'm doing it with like recycling plants and disposal sites. He can just get that bomb shelter and like chuck three of those in there and they don't count and he can gain his victory points at the end of the game. So really a lot of versatile ways to, you know, get rid of your, your nuclear um, waste. Okay, let's see here. I can place this. What do I want to get? I can get some money. I can get some... Oh, there's a way to get that victory point too. I can't buy anything else because I already invested in my one building. I can get, nope, I can't do that. Let's see here. I want to keep my food so I can pay for money. So maybe I come here and I get another food so I can do that twice if I have enough stuff, if I have enough uh, dice to go there, which I don't know if I will, but it's not the worst choice to make. So I'm going to come here, but because I did that energy, he can't follow. Energy is the lowest, it's the weakest action. He doesn't get to have that follow-up action, and that's going to be the the end of my assign my dice. I'm going to bring my dice back and I'm going to put them in their spaces. I want to have a top hat here and I want to have a star there. I want to put my follow die here so I can do my disposal site and I definitely want to activate my company. So here's how you get to do it. You get to do them in any order that you want. As long as you qualify for your building, you get to activate it. So my disposal site needed two dice. I take this and I flip it over. My hat, I can do up to two times as long as I have two dice there. I only have one die. I will activate it and pay one food, and I'm going to gain $2 for that. I made a restaurant. I get to do it once, but I could do it again if I place that here. I just wouldn't have been able to do my disposal site. And now I get to do my night action. I pay a victory point, and I get to upgrade any of these, and I think I want to upgrade this one because this gives me a chance to um, not max out on my resources at six, six, and nine. I can now go eight, eight, 12. And now I have this marker here that allows me to put, um, go on the tens and then wrap back around again for victory points. So it really gives me a chance to expand and grow with my resource track. That's gonna be the end of my activation. Now I do wanna mention right now, I, I don't have two buildings or three buildings out in the same zone yet but each die out here can activate individually each building as long as you qualify for it with dice. Your dice are not spent on one tile alone. So if I had another tile that has a one activation like the recycling plant here, I could also spend this die to activate this and to activate this. So that's the cool thing about having dice in certain spaces and really building up your commercial, industrial, or government. So I'm going to push these guys back up. I'm going to put this over here and I am going to pass player turn order to Lewis. He is going to go now. He's ready to pick up all of his dice and he's looking really strong with resources, but I've got to get him some of those structures and he might even get a chance to have another worker if he can unlock this other space right here. He just can't seem to roll the nuclear symbol. And I think that that is something he's going to have to do and maybe to try to roll as many dice as possible to make it happen, I'm gonna have him keep one of these dice, but then re-roll all the rest of them and hope that he kind of gets it. So here we go. Boy, it just isn't happening, huh? Now he can still do, at the end, he can trade two to make it one of his choice because it lets him build a structure for any discount, for, for a discount of one from any place. Um, he definitely wants to go to this place to buy from government because he has all the steel and he has some cash now and that mint looks so good. So let's have him keep that lead worker. And this is his last roll. You only get to re-roll twice. And so um, whatever he gets here is what he gets. Wow! I think he's just going to trade out one of these. He's going to put to this side. 
This is his cargo hold action, and he's going to make this a nuclear symbol. I think he's just going to do it. You get to do that one time on your turn, and it says so uh, right here on your board. You can see it two dice one time to whatever one die of those two you want it to be. And I think he's just going to do that instead of having two follow dice. I think that's uh, just smart, because then he can come down here for sure, and he can build with the discount, and then he won't have to necessarily build this turn if he can't afford it. Okay, so he didn't get this symbol, but that could be the nuke symbol. Let's have him do it. I'm gonna have him come down here. He's gonna top hat it, and he's gonna do trade out one for one. I want him to trade out. Does he wanna pay a food or does he wanna pay a steal? A food or a steal, a food or a steal, a food, food, food or a steal. Let's have him do a food and he's gonna get four bucks. There we go, done. And then he's gonna walk over here. Oh, whoops, before I get to follow. So I'm gonna follow the top hat and I need uh, some cash. So what if I paid my, um, I wanna pay a steal and I'm gonna get two because I'm following with this action. That's, that's my choice right there. Then he's gonna take this guy and he's gonna make that a wrench symbol. And he is going to say, I'd like to pay six. Here's his six dollars. And he's going to flip over his second die unlock action. Now he's got a lot of mobility. He's got a lot of cargo hold. And he rolls this die right away. And he got a top hat. Okay, interesting. But because this was a new action, I'm going to get to have one of these actions. And I should probably pay my one food to get my one victory point so that I can activate this without having to worry about it at the end of my uh, next round, which is a great, I think, forward planning. It's hard to get those points unless you're just going for points. So I think that was a good follow-up for me. Now he's got this top hat. What is he gonna do with that? I think he wants to come over here and buy. Didn't he wanna come over here and buy? Let's see here. Yeah, I think he wants to do this. He's gonna come over here and he's gonna look and I want him to buy the mint because the mint is so, oh, he has no money. He does two have money. Okay, I'm gonna do this first. Top hat, three bucks. One, two, three, couldn't have been a better roll for him. I get to do my follow up. I have no resources so I can't trade out so I'm just gonna get a whole dollar. And now he's gonna take this guy and come over here and he's gonna buy the mint for three steel, um, not three steel, one less, so two steel, one, two, and then the three dollars that he just paid. Because this gives him, with two activation dice, two bucks and a victory point every time. This is a really, really cool card. I mean, I'm loving it. So he's going to put that out here in his space. And he still has so many resources left to activate his build structure. Oh, he's doing so good. Okay, so here... He activated here, which means I get to have my energy follow up and I again have no resources. So I'm going to take that one uh, food. Yay. <laughs> I need it. Okay. So tax office came out, which is going to give money for um, structures that are the industrial uh, symbol. You'll see that right there. Really, really good. He just took a blazing fast turn because I can't wait for him to get to the uh, activate your structures phase for him because this was really, really good. He's got these dice out here and he's going to play out, yes, here. He's going to play out down here. He's got, oh no, I did do, oh, he did just slightly goofy, a slightly backwards thing. Dang it. I thought he was going to be able to activate the mint, but he needs two dice to do that with. And he has two of his uh, dice are the top hats. And so they don't match and he can't activate the mint unless he played this up here. But I want him to get another building. So he's going to hopefully buy the uh, down here so he can activate it. I think he is. He's definitely going to activate it. Oh, and yep, I got it, Paolo. <laughs> If you take a nuke die, you got to take your, your nuclear energy, right? So this makes up for that die he took just this round. So when you roll the die and you keep it, you should take your nuclear, ener your nuclear waste immediately. So he's going to activate this die first. I don't, he can't do this one, but he might still be able to activate this because you get to do it in any order. 
He's going to build a structure from the market with any discount of a food or a dollar or a steal. And he's going to come down here to build the commercial so he can activate it. So here he can do stockpile and that does not help him. Game end doesn't help him now. Recycling plant does help him. He would just have to pay all of his food and he will be spending all of his food unless he gets his discount. So let's have him buy it for future thinking, forward thinking. He buys this guy and it costs him one less food. So he pays just two. He adds this right here to his space. This is no reactionary. There's no taking, I don't get to do anything in addition. And if he spends one die, he has one die here. He doesn't spend it as long as he activates it. He can push it down and spend two food to change this into one, but he doesn't have, he doesn't have the food to do that. So again, just shy, but getting a nice engine here going, activating this and getting some really, really cool things. So all of his dice are going to come back to him. Even that fifth die that he uh, traded out, he's going to put these guys right here. And then that's going to be the end of that. We're going to say, yep, we're done. We're going to move down. And now we only have four more turns to go. So play is just going to simply continue where players will roll and assign their dice out to the board. Then they will bring and activate their structures with their workers once they return them and then clean up and check for end round. The activation for each of these tiles is going to be this upgrade. You have seen the cargo hold expansion, the activation of the structures, there's space to grow and keep getting more and more. Plus every time you flip these over, you're gonna be getting points. Players are going to check their victory point track at the end of the game. Any of their game end victory point conditions they also get points for all their upgrades, including their um, uh, spaces up here for more workers to be placed out. They also are going to look at their government cards. So again, my goal was to do those five different uh, upgrades and then I can receive those points. And Lewis's is to make sure that he doesn't have any negative uh, nuclear waste. And I also have two positive. So this is another thing to keep in mind is you can get points that way. And it's really a two point uh, jump from minus one to plus one. And if you have resources that are in your first panel that you've expanded to, like your resource track, you'll receive one point. And if they're in this second expansion track, if you've got resources all the way up here, your food and your steel, you're gonna get two points for each of those markers that are up there on that track as well. So those are the ways you're gonna score victory points and players simply just get six turns um, when you're playing a one to two player game, which was this two player game that I demonstrated here. So if you wanna hear my final thoughts about Manhattan Project War Machine, you can hit that I in the top right corner or click the link in the show notes below in five, four, three, two, one.